So this just happened in Houston. Well, a man whom investigators believe was trying to get inside homes in an East Harris County neighborhood is dead tonight, shot and killed by a teenager who was home during a break in. That shooting has shaken the neighbors in one section of the Cloverleaf community. The man had been roaming around his neighborhood for at least 15, 20 minutes before he went into the home right behind me, to the front door rather. He tried to get in. He never got that far when he was shot. Watch as this man, wearing a heavy coat, backpack, and gloves, roam around the drainage ditches. It was just before 7 in the morning, and Aracela Herrera immediately thought something was wrong. With the weird behavior in this man that I've never seen before, I figured I need to call, you know, my neighbor and let her know there's a man going into her property. Herrera's neighbor had just left to take her children to school, but a teenage boy, 14, was at home. Moments later, Herrera watched as the man with the backpack made his way to his neighbor's house and tried to get in the front door. The guy was at his porch and the, the kid opened up the door and shot the guy. Four times total? That's what I heard. Sheriff Ed Gonzalez confirms what happened. The male spotted uh, an unknown male uh, that was outside the doorway at, at some point and he uh, began to fire multiple shots, several shots, uh, at least five or six shots. Uh, striking the mail, uh, and the mail was pronounced deceased here on the scene. This story reminds me of a time when I was around the same age, maybe a little bit younger than this 14 year old. And I was born a millennial, but raised as a generation Xer. So I was basically a latchkey kid. So when my mom went to work, she would leave me home alone or my cousins would come and stay with me for the day. One day when my cousins were over, we heard what we thought was someone trying to break into the house. We kind of all freaked out and then tried to find somewhere to hide and then called the police because there was no gun in the house and even if there was, none of us knew how to use one. Now, I know the idea of younger kids and guns is a sensitive topic for most, but this case is an example of why training kids young on how to use firearms properly and safely is important. You know how to use a gun, baby? There's a huge difference between a kid learning firearms at home versus in the streets. The outcomes usually are totally different in terms of how they end up utilizing those firearms. There's no telling what this man was going to do if he got inside the house. So I'm glad he not only had a firearm, but also understood how to use it. Now, don't confuse that with me celebrating this man's death. I do have a soft spot for homeless people who are dealing with mental health issues. And there's a likelihood that this man was suffering with some mental health issues on top of being homeless. Now, not every homeless person that's dealing with mental health issues is violent, but they can be. And honestly, to a point of sheer brutality sometimes. But it's not this kid's or anyone else's responsibility to figure out which type of person they're dealing with at the time. All they can do is go off of the current actions, and from the sounds of it, his actions would make this teen's actions warranted. Uh, of a male matching the gentleman's description, that he was kicking on the door requesting money, um, and it dropped approximately three calls, and then this, this call later dropped. However, what's interesting is how this sheriff responded to this shooting during the interview. If individuals are, uh, are you know, feel they have to they have a right to protect their home they have a right to to feel safe in their home and obviously at some point uh, if individuals feel threatened or, or concerned then obviously they're gonna make the decisions they need to 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 protect their their property uh, obviously law enforcement can't be there at every home at every situation uh, ironically there is a sign on the gate that basically says that uh, something to the effect that if intruders will be met with force and so uh, I think it's very clear on the front gate and so again I mean look folks are being tired of being victimized at the other day uh, you know burglar burglary thefts and things like that a lot of times there is a lot of uh, for lack of a better word petty thefts that do occur kind of thefts especially around the freeway corridors when you have uh, the presence of a large uh, street population or homeless population. The reason why his response is so interesting to me is because this is Sheriff Ed Gonzalez of Harris County Sheriff's Office, who is a registered Democrat. So hearing him espouse what is essentially the spirit of the Second Amendment without any buts or exceptions was very surprising to me, especially considering he's been pretty vocal about gun violence. We're past the time of just, just talking and not getting anywhere and letting time pass by. Harris County Sheriff Ed Gonzalez says he believes we can do something this time to prevent mass shootings. On Twitter, he's expressed support for a red flag law that would allow his office to take guns from people on a path toward 
toward violence. Absent of, of a law that would allow us that type of, of flexibility with the proper safeguards, then our hands many times are tied. He's also tweeted about improving access to mental health care and increasing security at schools. Sheriff Gonzalez says he uses social media because it can be a powerful tool for change. It's a way to engage directly with individuals and uh, for, from all walks of life. And I think that uh, it's important to be in those uh, public squares, if you will, where, where people are convening. The responsibility, he says, is on all of us to demand changes. They may not stop every shooting, but it's worth it, he says, if we can prevent some of the pain people are feeling right now. This seems to be a recurring thing. That's why, uh, unfortunately, I, I can say clearly that we are going to see another one unless something drastically changes. Somebody out there is already planning that next one or at least has that, that thought in their mind. The crazy thing is, I don't disagree with a lot of what he said, but I don't support red flag laws. I don't wanna go too far as to say Ed Gonzalez might be more reasonable Democrat on how to solve the gun violence or better yet, just violence in general issue in America, but I haven't done the complete research on his stance on this issue to make that statement. Let's just say I was surprised by his response because it is the absolute truth. Because the only person responsible for your safety is you. Right now, shop out MrColeonNoir.com. We just released our new Stanley style water tumblers or coffee tumblers or whatever you want to put in it because this keeps your cold drinks cold for 24 hours and your hot drinks hot for 12 hours. On top of that, you get your straw, but even better, you can make it leak proof. But the best thing about it is you can actually put any of the designs, the two-way designs that I have at shop.mrcolionnoir.com on your tumbler. So now you have a better looking tumbler with better functionality and yeah. So head over to shop.mrcolionnoir.com or hit the link in the description section and grab your Pro 2A Tumblr day. Oh, and did you know that Visa, MasterCard, and American Express will now start tracking gun and ammo purchases? Well, if you didn't, now you can watch the video about it that I did here or here, wherever it pops up. And don't forget to leave a comment, hit the thumbs up button, and subscribe to the channel.